7 now we move on to uh, another input device which is known as card readers so card readers are basically devices that will read information from a card okay it can be a debit card can be a credit card okay and it once it reads information from the card it sends that information to the computer okay so here card readers are used to uh, read data stored on a card that is carried by a user the data on that card can be used to unlock doors, access secure areas, it can be used to make payments or track people, parcels and even pet animals. It can be even used to track pet animals. So the cards can be using any three of these methods. Okay, well, The most common method and the most old method is the magnetic stripe. Okay, So if you look at this kind of a card, uh, this kind of a card is having what you call a black color uh, tape at the behind of the card. Okay, Not tape exactly. We call it a magnetic stripe, okay? So this is the least secure method as the data on the magnetic stripe can be easily uh, be stolen by criminals who put the card through a card reader without the card owner's knowledge, okay? The reason it is the least secure is because once you insert this card into a credit card reader or even into any other reader, uh, uh, there is no password or a pin as such that has to be entered, okay? Once you, uh, what do you call, scan it or once you, uh, what do you call, swipe it, data from it can be taken, okay? There is no pin that has to be entered. That is why this method is the least secure method. On the other hand, we have something here called microchip, okay? Now, nowadays, almost all cards have this kind of a chip on the card, on the front side of the card, okay? If your card has a microchip, then once you, you know, uh, scan it using a card reader you will be asked to enter a pin okay a personal identification number only then data from the card can be taken okay so let's quickly go through it it's called a programmable chip okay data on a programmable chip is only readable when a correct pin is entered into the reader okay only once the correct pin has been entered then the chip will start working okay Nowadays, most cards come with the magnetic stripe at the behind and the programmable chip at the front. Okay, so it depends which supermarket you go to. Certain supermarkets may prefer to use the magnetic stripe. Certain supermarkets may prefer to use the programmable chip. Okay, it depends. Almost all cards are having this and this, both of them in one card. Okay, and then another emerging technology, something else that's coming up is something known as RFID or NFC. Okay. So RFID is a short range wireless communication method and NFC is a branch of RFID. So RFID tags contain a unique identification number that is linked to records in a database. Okay. So example hotel rooms can be unlocked using an NFC card. Okay. So if you look over here, uh, over here for example the key is having an NFC chip inside it. Okay. You just keep that in front of the door. Okay. This door lock is having a card reader fixed to it so once you keep it it checks the hotel database is this a valid rfid number if it is so the door will get unlocked okay then also using nfc in your mobile phone near field communication okay you can be using an app that saves your credit card details okay and then what you do is you open that app and keep that app on top of a credit card reader then the relevant amount can be transferred that is what we call nfc near field communication both devices have to be extremely close to each other if you look at this picture over here also you can see this particular card is having nfc technology this is a symbol for nfc so you just keep the card close to the card reader and the relevant amount will be transferred no need to uh, what you call swipe or uh, what you call uh, fix it inside like this okay uh, then so we're done with uh, card readers okay so just remember a card can be using any one of these uh, technologies in order to transfer data to the computer okay then uh, uh, we move on to something which we call sensors okay so sensors are also input devices so sensors are used to input data about the physical environment they can automatically input data without the need for human action okay so sensors are mostly used uh, in places where humans cannot be present and used for purposes that humans cannot do okay so let's look at a few examples the use of sensors has many benefits such as they can be placed in remote or dangerous places okay so for example volcanic areas you can have sensors fixed over there because humans cannot physically be present there you can have a sensor fixed over there to detect what's happening there to detect the temperature there okay and another thing about sensors is they can 
can monitor continuously they can keep monitoring the situation okay, and keep informing the computer of what's happening now then they remove the possibility of human error no error takes place sensors detect precisely what's happening now and then they can sense things that people cannot do. okay so for example a air conditioner can have a sensor fixed in it they have in the temperature uh, drops to uh, for example 16 degrees the ac should automatically switch off now 16 degrees is not something that a human being can detect a human being can detect hot and cold but not the exact temperature okay so uh, sensors can be used to detect things which humans cannot detect okay then there are many factors types of sensors to allow for the monitoring of a range of environmental factors so sensors can be used to detect light moisture and humidity temperature proximity and distance motion and movement pressure these are various things that sensors can be used to detect okay now we have completed input devices and we went through a few devices that your textbook had explained to you now we move on to output devices devices that give you information okay so output peripherals are connected to a computer and output the results of the computer's processing uh, processing various forms including electronic display okay which would be using using a monitor printed text would be using for example a printer video once again could be a monitor audio might be a speaker for example and then you can have tactical touch forms for example it can be a printed copy okay so uh, the first output device that our textbook teaches us is the monitor okay so monitors allow users to see the output from the computer on an electronic display and features of the monitor so when you purchase a monitor there are three things that you should always check okay the first thing is the screen size okay how big is the screen of the device of the monitor that you're going to purchase Second is the resolution. So I told you resolution is basically how many pixels, okay? And pixels basically means dots that make up an image. So you should check how many pixels can your monitor accommodate. Your monitor screen can accommodate how many pixels. Remember, the higher the number of pixels, the better the quality of the screen, okay? And finally, you have to also consider energy, consu uh, energy consumption. So always make sure you purchase a device which is energy efficient. Okay, meaning that it does not consume a lot of electricity. Okay, there are three types of monitors available nowadays: cathode ray tube (CRT), the bulky monitors. They are not that popular, but they are still available. Then you have something known as liquid crystal display (the LCD screen), and the latest that we are dealing with is LED (light emitting diode). Okay. Also, we do have printers when it comes to printers there are mainly two categories one is impact printers and the other is non-impact printers so uh, when, you, when you talk about impact printers we need to remember that they are generally noisy and they are extremely slow at printing the advantage of impact printer is its purchasing and running cost is extremely low okay so uh, if you look at impact printers we do have two examples one is dot matrix and the other is the daisy wheel okay so normally when it comes to billing for billing purposes if you go to certain supermarkets or stores you would notice that when it comes to printing the bill they use a very noisy printer known as a dot matrix printer i would recommend at this moment you go on to youtube and just type dot matrix printer and just watch a video on it immediately you will uh, understand what i mean by uh, very noisy and very slow at printing okay so the reason companies purchase impact printers uh, for billing purposes is mainly because their purchasing cost is low and the running cost is also low then we do have something known as non-impact printers okay this kind of this category of printers consist of printers mostly used nowadays non-impact uh, printers are of two main kinds so the first kind we have is inject printer and the second kind that we have is laser printers both of these come under non impact okay so before i explain this i want you to just understand the difference between impact and non impact so when we say impact we are basically we basically mean a printer which now inside the printer there is something called a ribbon a ribbon is what prints the characters on a piece of paper so when we say impact printer it means the ribbon hits on the paper or the ribbon prints 
by you know striking on the paper that's what we call impact printers and because they direct, the ribbon directly strikes on the paper it makes a very loud noise okay if you look at the video of how dot matrix uh, printers work you would you would notice that there is something moving across the paper printing the characters which we call the ribbon okay so because the ribbon is hitting against the paper we call it an impact printer when it comes to inkjet and laser we call it non-impact because there is nothing hitting against the paper let me explain to you how inkjet printers work so inkjet printers mostly uh, what do you call accommodate color printing most inkjet printers they allow you to do color printing so how do they work they work by spraying ink okay nothing hits against the paper ink is sprayed onto the charged area of the paper so when you send a print out the part that has to be printed is printed is electronically charged okay and then the ink is sprayed so once the ink is sprayed it automatically gets attracted to the charged areas on the paper okay so when it comes to inject printers your advantage is what they are cheap to purchase but do remember the running cost is high why is it high because you have to be purchasing various color cartridges okay so mostly inject printers come with four different color cartridges okay so you have to purchase four different color cartridges which means the running cost is going to be high and also its quality is not as good as laser printers okay if you look at inject printers generally the printouts sometimes appear a bit smudged okay and sometimes uh, the paper might appear a bit wet or heavy like okay so inject printers are not the best in terms of quality okay the best printers that you can use are laser printers okay but these printers mostly work with black colored ink okay so how do they work they print by fusing ink onto the charged areas on a piece of paper okay so inkjet printers spray the ink laser printers fuse ink onto the charged area okay that is why the quality of printouts is very very much more higher than inkjet printers okay the problem with laser printers is the buying cost is very high but do remember the running cost is extremely low okay its printing quality is also much better than inject printers also one more point that you can you, we can, we can uh, check it over here if you do a comparison over this table you will understand it in terms of speed laser is the best it can print very very fast okay in terms of cost dot matrix dot matrix is the best it's the cheapest in terms of cost per copy dot matrix is very low but do remember the quality is horrible it's always better to go for laser printers <clears throat> in terms of color printing okay it's available in both inject and laser in terms of quality laser is the best so examples of varieties used so places which do high volumes of printing will always go for a laser printer home printing and photographs will be using inject and generally for billing purposes they will be using a dot matrix printer okay where multiple copies will be required <coughs> And then uh, moving on to something known as plotters so plotters are also printers very similar to printers but they do print very very large objects okay like banners okay looking including product designers uh, uh, sorry uh, they, they uh, plotters are generally used by product designers architects engineers and cartographers okay so what are they used to print they are generally used to print very very high quality graphics like you know large banners maps okay so a plotter is a printer but it you it is used to print you know what you call high quality graphics which are very very big in size okay so over here there is a small explanation of how it works okay it does this by moving a pen across the paper to draw the lines and the pen can be raised away from and lowered onto the sheet of paper so you can see this machine this machine can be the length of an entire room okay and uh, it takes time okay and it is mostly used to print very very large drawings such as you know on the road you get huge ba advertisement banners okay then for example architectural drawings then it can be for example uh, posters okay so this is what you call a plotter okay uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our, our word document and we are going to try and answer a few questions from here okay you can start from question number 33 all the way up to question number 36. Uh, in our next video, we will be continuing from data projector.